Are they right now the best team in the East? Absolutely, Greeny. Look, we're looking at the, the next possible Kobe and Shaq, right? When you talk about elite scoring, prolific scorings at the guard position and inside with Joel and B. I don't know what defense you could design to stop those two. And look, when you talk about them putting those two in a pick and roll, side pick and roll, late game situations or whatever the case may be, it's not, no one in the league is going to be able to stop them. And then on top of that, they were able to keep uh, Thibo, one of the best wing defenders in the game today. But this is the thing. These two guys might break a, break a record for his free throw attempts in the game. I mean, mm. they're going to get to the free throw line. And here's another thing. Yes, I have Philly as my favorite, and I've been hearing a lot of, about a lot of pressures on Doc Rivers, and rightfully so. But guess what? A lot of pressures on Steve Nash as well over there mm. in Brooklyn. While a lot of people are trying to point the finger at Doc Rivers, Steve Nash has, has not fulfilled his obligation and lived up to the standard as well over there yeah. in Brooklyn. I agree with that. I just think a lot more is expected, candidly, of Doc than is expected of Steve. But I, but your point is well taken. So, Steve, Legs, you, you, heard, you, heard, you heard his breakdown there. Give it to me from your perspective. You know that team as well as anybody. Embiid and Harden, how exactly does it fit together? Oh, it fits for sure. It's just a matter of now determining the ebb and flow of their offense because you're talking about, you know, James Harden never having played with a big guy quite like this. Most of the bigs that James Harden – has played within his career have been pick and dive type of players and they get to the rim for a pocket pass or a lob or James does his thing. This is a little different now. You set a two-man game with Joel Embiid, he's going to want that basketball back whether it's as a post up or he's going to pick and pop. He's going to want to get his touches at the elbows. Um, you know, the year that he is having right now and the versatility he's showing, James Harden has to make sure you know he incorporates that. And conversely, Joel Embiid has never played with a ball-dominant guard that shoots the ball as much as James Harden. So, listen, there is definitely going to be an adjustment period. But once they get through that, Perk is 100% right. This is the most potent offensive combination in the NBA. And as a result, they should be favored to win the Eastern Conference now. And, look, do they have enough shooting around them? I think that's going to be a question mark. Uh, but keeping Thibel was key because he can guard anybody in the perimeter of the NBA. And you've also got maybe the best rim protector in the Eastern Conference in Joel Embiid. So the Sixers won this trade mm. because they weren't going to win a championship with Ben Simmons. They weren't going to win a championship with the roster they had this year because they didn't replace Ben Simmons. This is the first time they're genuinely in the debate as a championship contender. That's why you have to say Philly won the trade because Brooklyn was already there and they're still a championship contender. Philly upped it a notch. They're on that top tier now and they weren't prior to yesterday. All right, fair. So we, that's that one side of the trade. Let's go to the other side. What are the Brooklyn Nets, uh, Big Perk, with those two, uh, with whatever it is that Kyrie winds up being by the time we get to the playoffs and a healthy Kevin Durant and they get Ben Simmons in there and start working him in? What, how good are the Nets? I mean, Greenwich, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure that out as well. I mean, because it's not about the talent. It's about one, the availability of Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. And two, it's about the mindset of Ben Simmons. Look, I'm not taking anything away from Ben Simmons. One thing we know is that he's one of the best defensive players in the game today. A guy that's being able that that's able to go out there and switch one five pick and rolls and guard anybody. But it comes down to Ben Simmons and his mindset. And we saw last year in the playoffs, far as his confidence, that he shied away from the moment. Not only just passing up layups and dunks, but afraid to attack the basket because he's afraid to get to the free throw line. Ultimately, I think this is going to come down to the leadership of Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant is going to have to be a leader like never before, control that locker room, give Ben Simmons some confidence, something like what Draymond Green and Steph Curry has done for Andrew Wiggins, and I think they'll be just fine. I'm not picking them to win, but I think they'll be okay. I agree with you on the KD of it all. They need to get him back healthy because it, it, his presence alone, I have to believe, would help. So, so Legs, then let me come to you on that. And, and Kyrie remains the big if in all of this. And, and we are all aware that, you know, culturally we are living at this time now where vaccine mandates and mask mandates and all that kind of stuff are evolving. And in particular here in New York State, they are. If, and this is an enormous if, we get to a place in the playoffs where Kyrie Irving is eligible to play all games, home and road, and you put that big three together, 
are the Nets, in your opinion, the team to beat in the East? Well, it's hard to answer that, Greeny, until you see Ben Simmons' impact and can he psychologically handle the pressure that's going to come with this. This team is expected to win a championship. He put the bullseye on himself squarely with what he did this year and forcing his way out of Philly and basically mm. choosing not to even play basketball. That's how much he wanted to be out of there. He's got 20-something games to play with this group before they get into the playoffs, potentially having to go through Philadelphia to get to the finals. So I think, that can he handle the pressure of it? He's going to help them in a lot of ways, obviously. He's an elite defender. His pace is going to help them. And I think most importantly, he can create offense for the rest of their roster. KD and Kyrie don't need him to create offense for them. But the rest of those guys do need Ben Simmons for that. He can do it with his pace. He can guard anybody on the floor. But can he handle the pressure because he is still going to be on the floor in the last five minutes of games and there's a major issue that has not been addressed and we've barely talked about it. He hasn't really addressed what led us to this place in the first place, which was his lack of confidence <laughs> in certain moments and his lack right. of aggression in obvious scoring opportunities. If that's still there, that's a problem you've got to deal with at the end of games. So I need to see if Ben Simmons has, has, has helped himself in any way psychologically to handle the pressure of what he's going to come into right now in Brooklyn and the potential of having to go through Philadelphia to get to the NBA Finals. And my goodness, I'm so glad I live that close to the Wells Fargo Center because hmm. I will be there anytime hmm. Ben Simmons is in town. Although I don't know if he's going to play a game there in the regular season. I'd be surprised if he takes the court on March 10th. Wait, March 10th, Thursday night in Philly. Super quick, Legs. You don't, you do not expect Simmons to play in that game? He should because he should get it over with, but I'll be surprised if he, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I saw what Jimmy Butler got when he came back with Miami, and this doesn't compare to that. I can't imagine what they're going to unleash on Ben Simmons if he steps on that court. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.